Hi everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Janis, I'm a musician and producer and in this video I want to show you how you can build your own Moog type bass sounds with some digital touch inside your DAW. I initially wanted to create a Moog type sound video but then I added some FM distortion and liked the sound even more so I modified the topic and name of the sound a little bit. As I mentioned in my other videos about synth sounds, which you can find here, I never try to create perfect recreations of existing sounds or instruments. I always take them as a starting point for inspiration and then start building my own sound from it. I'm going to do this in Ableton Live with their synth wave table, but the settings I'm going to use should be more or less available to any type of synthesizer. And as always, before I start, a tiny reminder that in case you'll enjoy this video, please take a second to click the like button. So here I've loaded the synth already, in this case wavetable, and we're going to use both oscillators this time. So I just activate them. And one of them should be tuned down by an octave, so 12 semitones, which you can do here. And both of them should be a sawtooth wave. And the higher one I usually take down in volume a little bit. And let's just see. Yeah, so we have this sound. And I also like to detune one of them by maybe between 6 and 10. Something like this. And I also like to activate the sub here. This could also be some third oscillator. Some synthesizers have a third oscillator. It's not that important, but if you have one, it's nice to just add a tiny bit of sub content. In this case here, I had it at minus 10. But you can do the same with just adding another synth track with a sine wave or EQing in a specific way. So this is not the most crucial thing. What is really important though is the filter section. So here I take the filter down to 100, 100 because the movement I'm going to generate with the envelope. But let's first do the amplitude envelope where I have 0 0.5 milliseconds because I've figured out this is kind of what a Moog has. So why not taking the same one if the sound is inspired by it? And it works quite well, I must say and some decay of I think at three seconds. Yes. And a sustain of minus 14 and a release of about 900. And the envelope 2, which I'm going to connect to the cutoff frequency, is kind of similar with a few exceptions. So it's the same attack time and a decay of 1.9, oh, this is milliseconds, I always do this mistake, 1.9 seconds and 36% sustain at the same release time. The release time should always be kind of similar with those two envelopes in order to keep it natural at the end of the sound, otherwise it can get really messy and have some weird stops or changes in the color. and. At this synth, I have to link it to the filter cutoff frequency, which I did by the value of 84 out of 100 possible in total. And at many synthesizers, especially software synths, you have the frequency already linked to some envelope, but here you have to do it. It's often the case with wavetable synthesizers. So now if I play the note, we should hear some more movement. Yes, nice. Has some nice character already. Although I wanted to add some dirt, which you can do by changing the filter from clean to, for example, SMP. This one I like the most. This is now specific for this synth because if you have some emulation of a hardware synthesizer, they already try to emulate the kind of filter sound the synth has. So you don't have this kind of drive button, but this you have in Ableton. And sometimes you can. So if you see it, just think of it and feel free to experiment. And you have to adjust the volume. Oh, this one was taken down already. So usually I think it's at 
another value, I don't know. Oh yeah, see it gets really loud. But it makes the sound grittier and this is something I really like for this specific type of sound. It needs some aggression. And some tiny bit of resonance should also be fine, although you have to be careful to not have strong resonant peaks unless you really want to go for that sound. And it's kind of cool already. What I want to do though is change the play mode from polyphonic to monophonic so there's only one note at a time and you don't get messy overlaps between the notes and I also want to add some unison detune which I often do with three voices and some amount of 10. I figured out this is some good setting but again those parameters might sound slightly different at your synth but just play around with it to the extent where you like it. For me it's always important that it doesn't sound like a chorus overload and just gives this kind of depth and width to the sound and feels pleasant and just still keep the main character. And now it has this kind of wide chorusy stereo sound but for bass sounds this is also something that should always make you aware of possible mono issues and I always like to add the utility plugin in um, Ableton and every door has a thing like this it's just this plugin that lets you add some gain adjust the stereo width address phase issues has a mono button things like that and you can see if I mono the sound it loses some of this punch. Also gets softer because there's some cancellation and you can of course compensate this with gain but what I prefer doing is to lower the width a little because we don't need it that wide. So I would maybe put it to let's say 25 and also hit this bass mono button so we say every note below 120 hertz should be in the center so this way we kind of keep something of the stereo image but it doesn't collapse as much if we sum it to mono at some bluetooth speaker for example or some phones i mean of course music sounds better on other devices but I always like for bass and drums especially to keep this in mind that the center stays impactful if you sum it to mono and I did this mistake already a few times that there was just too much stereo thing going on and usually the music just sounds weird and loses a lot of impact. So now the sound is at the stage where I like it and was like okay this actually has this Moog character before adjusting some tiny other things but the main character is there but why not fooling around with the FM distortion because sometimes it can bring up some new ideas or sounds and make the sound more exciting because I also felt like okay this sound is cool but you've heard it many times and it also doesn't sound as amazing as real Moog of course so why not trying to personalize it a little more to let it be a sound by itself rather than trying to copy something. So here I played around with the FM and I brought the tune to minus 50 for the first oscillator and the amount to 50. For the first oscillator it didn't change that much. It added a little bit of this digital vibe so yeah the digital vibe definitely comes from the FM synthesis but with the second oscillator it was really pleasant. The tune I left at zero and the amount is at 50 and this really added some bassy depth to the sound. Oh this is too deep. I guess this sound also works really nicely with some additional saturation like I did a week ago for my metal sound tutorial which you can find in this playlist I was linking in the beginning and still is inside this info box and yeah I feel happy with it. 
now it's just time for a few tiny adjustments to take away the kind of static character of the sound, although you just want to go with it. And I like to just apply some LFO to the pitch, very tiny bit. And you have to watch out here that the amount isn't too high. Actually, it works kind of well to have it a little exaggerated, so I'm just going to leave it this way. And what I also really like to do is to, this is now wavetable specific, but not Ableton wavetable, but generally wavetable synth specific, that you can apply the LFO to the oscillator position. So if I click on this one, I got this oscillator one position value here. And so if I apply it, you see that the waveform starts moving around. For this type of waveform, it doesn't make the biggest difference yet, although it's one of those tiny changes that just add up in making the sound more charismatic. But if you have another wavetable, such as here in the vintage section or whatever, they have way more stages that sound different to each other, so you can hear way more movement and sometimes it can be really inspiring to play around with this. I'm also going to apply it to the second oscillator, but with the other LFO so that we have some different type of movement. Oh, no, this was stupid. Of course, I meant this one. Maybe let me make it a little faster. Oh, but this is way too much, way too obvious. And I like it a lot. It feels very pleasant to play around with it. Now you could adjust the velocity parameters so you can be a bit more playful with the sound, see how the filter reacts to the velocity. Also you can apply this waveform to the velocity. But this is something very personal and sometimes you don't want it at all. You just want to have those impactful sounds and they should always come at the same power. And yeah, this is actually what I like the most for this specific sound. So I guess that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to click the like button. I also want to warmly invite you to subscribe to my channel where you can find more videos about synth sounds, beat making or just music production in general. And apart from that, I wish you inspiration with whatever it is that you create that you stay healthy and I really hope to meet you maybe some other time soon at my channel. Bye.